forces, race cars, Indianapolis, and Newton's laws, I think I know where I'm going next. With the amount of physics going on at a racetrack, Newton would definitely love racing. We went to see a tire test at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and to hang out with our friend Julian from the Chip Ganassi race team and learn a little bit more about the forces and physics involved with their cars. Looks like today we're at one of the coolest science experiments around. Tell us a little bit about what's going on back here. What we do is we have the control tire, as we call it, is the tire from last year's Indy 500, the 2008. We only have one variable at a time. First, we run through different constructions where we keep the same compound or rubber on the tire. Then we have a control tire where we keep the construction the same and change the rubber or the compound on each tire. From that, we pick the best combination and compare that against our control tire to try and produce a better combination tire the next year. And I guess you keep lots of records, uh, so your, your science journal is your race journal. <laughs> yeah, our, sci our race journals are very sophisticated. There's literally hundreds of things you can change on the car, so we have all that specified. And in addition to doing it with the tires, we get some time at a test like this where we change variables on our car. Uh -huh. And again, it's how well you do the experiments. Let's talk a little bit about the forces of these tires. Why do you need a really good tire uh, in a race car like this? We need grip from the tire to go around the corner as fast as we can. We need to generate as much force as we can from the tire. We do that with the tire rubber or compound, mm -hmm. the actual grip of the tire. And the whole car is designed to give aerodynamic downforce, which is a force, a vertical force downwards through the car to push mm -hmm. it onto the track. And we have three or four major components that have the biggest effect. The rear wing is one. This is like a wing of an aeroplane, but instead of on an aeroplane where it lifts the aeroplane up, we actually put it on the car upside down to push the really? car down. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same as an aircraft wing in principle. Okay, so the rear wing pushes, has down force. Yeah. Now you say the actual body of the car does also? Yeah, the underneath of the car, which we can't really see here, is shaped like a Venturi so that as the air passes through it, it speeds up as the Venturi constricts it down and produces a low pressure, which sucks the car onto the ground also. And then we balance all that with a front wing, which again mm -hmm. is a front aerofoil, mm -hmm. like an aircraft aerofoil just flipped upside down. And we change the angle of this so that we balance what we're doing with the rear wing. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you put all the grip on the rear, then the driver wouldn't be able to steer it if he had You're no grip on the front. Mm -hmm. You need a balance of front to rear grip to make the car go around the corner. Now I see other little it. subtle things on it, like these uh, mirrors, they, uh, they look like they've been designed for aerodynamics. Is that true also? Yeah, they're really sculpted. We've put hundreds and potentially even thousands of hours in testing different mirror shapes. So basically, if you got all these down forces, when you go up on a curve, that holds you against the side of the track. How high yeah. up can you go on a curve? Well, the car produces enough grip that we could actually drive around on the ceiling. Really? Completely <laughs> upside down, <laughs> quite happily. Maybe someday somebody will do it just to prove yeah. it can be done. But it would be relatively easy to drive around on the ceiling, well, as long as you kept your speed up. You kept your speed up and you had your down forces. This yeah. is all a balance of between Newton's laws, friction, and our friend gravity at yeah. all times. Well, today we've been investigating how things hold on the track and how things accelerate, but Newton also had some laws about deacceleration. Yeah. So let's talk about what happens when you come to a quick stop. Uh, what, what do we have to keep the driver safe? There's a lot of work goes into these cars on safety. It's all designed and it's crash tested, uh, run into brick walls and that kind of thing to mm -hmm. make sure it behaves in a proper manner to absorb the energy to stop it getting through to the driver. We also have what we call is a crash box, which is supplied by the Indy Racing League for Indy cars. And that sole purpose is to record the G signature or the acceleration signature when you have an accident. So they can look at how well the car stood up to a certain magnitude mm -hmm. of accident by measuring the forces you can kind of categorize that oh this was a you know a really big accident mm -hmm. let's look at what happened and it records exactly what the car saw in terms of forces and you can look at how it was damaged and start relating wow. the two and improving its response to those damage situations. You know I'll tell you uh, Isaac Newton would have loved 
to hear you say what you just said yeah. about G forces and mass and acceleration because he worked out the math of this hundreds yeah. of years ago. Yeah. But I don't think you ever dreamed that one day a red car like an apple would be yeah. out on the Indianapolis track uh, yeah. putting these things to test. That's and it's all amazing. still the same math as he dreamt up all those years ago. It's just been expanded its uses since then. That's amazing. Well, Julian, I can't wait to see this out on the track. And okay. we'll, put, we'll put all your work to the test yeah. today. stays at rest until a force acts upon it. That was a big force.